I've already compared the OnePlus 12 with the Pixel 8 Pro, but how do the models a step down compare? The OnePlus 12R is the company's more affordable but still powerful phone, as is the Pixel 8 for Google. And at the time I made this video, the two are very similarly priced, thanks to the Pixel 8 being older and discounted. So which do you choose? The big muscle, powerful OnePlus or the compact AI smarts equipped Pixel? I'm Cam Bunton and in this video, I'll tell you. So the first thing and probably the most obvious thing, these two phones don't look or feel anything alike. I mean, look at them. Google's phone has that iconic Pixel design that's simple, friendly and quite minimalist in approach compared to the look of the OnePlus. It stands in stark contrast to that big round camera protrusion on the back having that simple uniform horizontal camera bar across the width of the phone. And while both of these finishes are glossy, the OnePlus shows fingerprints a lot more clearly than the Pixel does, so it's going to require more wiping unless you use a case. In which case, it doesn't matter at all. The biggest differentiator, however, is the size. Now, the Pixel 8, as compact phones go, isn't especially small, but it is considerably smaller than the popular large screen flagship Android phones, OnePlus 12R included. And that combined with the curving in the metal and the glass makes it a phone that's more comfortable and easier to use one-handed. Now OnePlus has alleviated that somewhat by putting curves in the glass on the front and the back, making this big phone feel smaller than it is, but it'll take up more space in your hand, pocket or purse and leave you needing to stretch further if you're having to use it one-handed, unless of course you have the one-handed mode switched on. As for bezels, they're not actually much different, but because the Pixel display is flatter and smaller, they're far more noticeable on the front of the Google phone. It is worth considering durability too, and here Google has tested and certified its phone for a higher water resistance rating. It's IP68, which means it can be submerged in over a meter of water for half an hour. OnePlus's IP54 only certifies it for light spray. It also means it's not quite as dust tight as the Pixel. Now in daily real life, both should survive just fine if you leave them in the bathroom while running a shower or get caught in the rain or drop them in shallow water, but Google just gives you that bit more security here. Overall then, I think Pixel wins on the design, but it's moving to the other areas that skews things more in favour of the OnePlus. So displays and again, the most obvious thing, size. At nearly 6.8 inches, you get a lot more screen real estate on the OnePlus 12R than on the Pixel 8. It's the obvious sacrifice when wanting a smaller phone. By their very nature, they have smaller displays. So when you're watching movies or diving into your favorite games, you just get more of it with the OnePlus phone, even if the curves at the edges mean some of that image curls around and gets a tiny bit distorted. But that's not the only way the OnePlus display outperforms the Pixel. It's also brighter and noticeably so. With a peak of 4,500 nits, if you crank both up to full brightness, you'll immediately see the extra light coming from the OnePlus display giving more life to images in general and making those dark HDR scenes in movies easier to see. As importantly, it also means it's easier to see outside in bright daylight, which is important, especially when you're out taking photos. Now, that's not to say the Pixel 8 display is dim. It's not and still has a 2000 nit peak. But OnePlus's display for 2024 have cranked it up a notch, pushing brightness further than a lot of previous smartphones have managed. And you can tell. Now, color wise, there's not a huge amount of difference. However, OnePlus's software lets you fine tune and tweak color gamut, warmth and other display settings to a more granular level than the Pixel will. And that's not the only software difference. Pixel software is big, colorful and pretty simple. You get some useful features like generative wallpapers, magic edit in photos and a bunch of other AI equipped abilities to make it a more useful device. OnePlus is all about customization, letting you tweak everything about the appearance from notification lights to app icons. Now, which you prefer to use is entirely down to personal preference, but one thing isn't. Support. Being Google's own phone, you get security patches delivered promptly and regularly on the Pixel, and it's supported for up to seven years of major updates. OnePlus is going to give you three years. It is worth noting though that despite that, OnePlus has designed the hardware inside the phone in a way to optimize it for long-term use. There are RAM, storage, and battery optimizations designed to make it feel as fast, smooth, and long-lasting in two to three years' time as it is when you first unbox it. Which brings us nicely to performance in general. And whichever way you look at it, whether from a speed and efficiency standpoint or a battery life angle, the OnePlus 12R is the better phone. It is worth caveating that statement with one observation. When it comes to loading up apps, using the phone for daily tasks like browsing the web, social media, casual games, 
there isn't a huge difference. Both feel like fast and smooth phones, partly down to that 120 hz display and partly because most modern chips, including the Tensor G3 and the Pixel, are actually pretty quick and make light work of most things. It's when you use them for longer periods, you might just notice the Pixel warm up a little bit more under load. Or if you benchmark them, the OnePlus will score higher. Or load up graphically intense games and sink half an hour into them, the OnePlus seems to cope better with those heavy tasks. It also seems to do so while managing battery life better. Although that's most certainly also down to the fact that battery is much bigger. It's got nearly a thousand milliamp hours more than the 4,575 milliamp hour battery in the Pixel and can almost stretch the two days with my own light to moderate usage. The Pixel can't. And my own usage is about three hours a day, usually mixed between casual games, camera use, social media, reading sports news and web browsing, maybe the odd YouTube video here and there. And with that type of usage, the OnePlus often ends the day with around 50% left over. Pixel is somewhere between 30 and 40, depending on the mix of use. Now, the other advantage of the OnePlus is that when it does get empty, it can refill again really fast. The 100 watt charger in the box can do a full refill in less than half an hour. And despite the smaller battery, the 27 watt limit on the Pixel means it only half fills the battery in that same time. It does have wireless charging though, for added convenience, where the OnePlus doesn't. So cameras now, and while the OnePlus does have three cameras, only two of them are really worth talking about, because the third is a low resolution macro lens. Effectively then, we're comparing two phones that both have a primary and an ultra wide. But because the main sensor has a lot of pixels, both of them have the ability to zoom in digitally, which crops into that sensor. In daytime and indoors with some light, the differences were pretty consistent across the board. Pixel's colours from the primary camera were a little bit more muted, but closer to what I saw with my naked eye. It also seemed to do a better job of evening out highlights to retain detail where OnePlus across both lenses often overexposed and lost finer details because the highlights were blown out. Still, it did a better job of lifting detail from shadows. Neither phone has a brilliant ultra wide, Pixel struggled to focus a lot and OnePlus's was a completely different color balance to its main and was much cooler and sometimes greener. As for the digital zoom, while it may go further on the OnePlus, it doesn't look great, even at two times, where pictures often end up looking mottled and lacking in sharpness and it's even worse at five times. That night, using the dedicated night modes, I found the Pixel was better at lifting detail out of the shadows or darker parts of the image. Generally speaking, that meant being able to see more of the light and color in the sky skies and seeing details in the shadows. With both of the phones I found however that it wasn't really worth using the ultra wide at night time. Both had issues here, with the OnePlus struggling sometimes with motion blur giving me quite blurred images, where the Pixel's ultra wide sometimes just seemed to struggle to focus completely, and I've had this issue many times. And while the blurred out of focus soft shot does actually look quite cool and artsy, it's not what I was going for. The advantage of OnePlus is you have a pro mode where you can manually tweak focus, white balance, ISO and shutter speed. With Pixel you're mostly stuck with how the camera processes the image automatically. In the end there are a couple of choices to make here. Do you want the best display and performance? If so, OnePlus 12R is your best bet. If you want the better cameras and a more compact and durable phone, the Pixel is the better phone. As far as value for money goes though, on balance I think Given the original price of the Pixel 8 and how affordable the OnePlus is, the 12R is a fantastic buy. Let me know what you think of these two phones in the comments down below or you can get me on threads, I'm at Cam Bunton. If you did like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap that notification bell. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.